Have you ever looked at a train track and wondered, why are train rails always made of steel? Why not aluminum, copper, or even titanium? On the surface, it might seem like a simple choice, but the decision to use steel involves a deep understanding of physics, engineering, economics, and even chemistry. Trains are some of the heaviest vehicles on land, and they run at high speeds over vast distances. That means the rails they travel on must meet an incredibly strict list of requirements. In this video, we're going to break down exactly why steel is the king of rail materials and why other metals just can't quite compete. Let's explore, right here, on History of Simple Things. Let's start with one of the most important factors, strength and durability. Trains can weigh thousands of tons, and when they roll over the rails, they exert tremendous pressure on a very small surface area. The point of contact between a train wheel and a rail is roughly the size of a dime. That's an immense amount of stress concentrated in a tiny space. Steel is a metal alloy that contains iron and a small percentage of carbon, usually around 0.6 to 1.5%. This composition gives it an incredibly high tensile strength, meaning it resists being pulled apart, and compressive strength, which is its resistance to being squashed or compacted. Other metals like aluminum or copper simply don't have the same strength to weight ratio. Aluminum, for example, is much lighter and softer. While that might be good for things like airplane frames or beverage cans, it makes aluminum completely unsuitable for bearing the weight of massive trains over time. It would deform quickly, bend under pressure, and wear out in no time. But strength alone isn't enough. The material also needs to be hard and wear resistant. That's because as trains pass over the rails, they cause not just downward pressure, but also friction and shear forces. Over time, this wears away the surface of the rail. Steel is especially good at resisting wear and abrasion. And it's not just any steel. It's specifically hardened steel, sometimes with special additives like manganese to make it even tougher. The outer surface of the rail is often heat-treated to increase hardness even further, extending the rail's life. Compare this to a metal like copper. While copper has excellent electrical conductivity, it is extremely soft and would wear down quickly under the constant friction of passing train wheels. Even titanium, which is known for being strong and corrosion resistant, is more expensive and doesn't provide the same balance of hardness and affordability as steel. Another key point to consider is thermal expansion and temperature resistance. Railroads stretch across entire countries, from frozen tundras to blazing deserts. The material used in the rails needs to expand and contract predictably with temperature changes. Steel does this quite well. It has a relatively low coefficient of thermal expansion compared to many other metals, meaning it doesn't expand or contract as much with temperature swings. This stability is vital to maintaining the alignment and safety of the tracks. If the rails expanded too much, they could buckle in the heat, something known as a sun kink, which can lead to derailments. Conversely, if they contracted too much in the cold, gaps could form between the rails, making the ride unstable or even dangerous. Aluminum, for example, expands nearly twice as much as steel with heat, making it much less suitable for long, continuous rail lines. Then there is the issue of cost and availability. Steel is relatively cheap to produce, especially at the scale required for rail infrastructure. The raw materials, primarily iron ore and coal, are abundant and easy to source. The steelmaking process, though energy intensive, has been refined over the decades to be extremely efficient. On the other hand, metals like titanium or nickel-based alloys may be strong or corrosion-resistant, 
but they're also prohibitively expensive. Aluminum, while cheaper than titanium, still requires large amounts of energy to refine from bauxite ore. Copper, too, is far more expensive per ton than steel and would make rail projects economically unfeasible. Railroads often span thousands of miles, and laying track is one of the most expensive parts of building rail infrastructure. Using a more expensive material than steel would send costs skyrocketing for very little benefit. Let's not forget ease of fabrication and maintenance. Steel can be rolled, welded, forged, and machined with relative ease compared to many other metals. This makes it ideal for forming into long, continuous rails, switching mechanisms, and other complex components. Repairs and replacements are also simpler because steel is well understood and widely used across multiple industries. If a section of track needs to be welded or reshaped, maintenance crews already have the tools and know-how to do it with steel. Specialized or exotic metals would require entirely new techniques, equipment, and training, not to mention the added time and expense that would come with it. And while we're on the topic of maintenance, it's worth noting that steel can be recycled and reused effectively, which is a major environmental and economic plus. When a stretch of rail reaches the end of its service life, it can often be melted down and reformed into new rails or other steel products. This contributes to the overall sustainability of the material. Other metals might be recyclable too, but again, the cost and complexity often make them less appealing for large-scale infrastructure. Finally, steel has proven itself through more than a century of real-world use. Railroads have been using steel since the 19th century, when it replaced iron as the material of choice for rails. The shift from iron to steel came with enormous benefits, reduced breakage, increased train speeds, and better safety. Over time, steel rails have evolved to become even more advanced, with continuous welded rails that stretch for miles without joints, reducing the clatter of wheels and minimizing maintenance. It's a material with a track record, pun intended, that no other metal has managed to surpass in this specific role. So next time you see a train gliding smoothly along a set of rails, you'll know that those tracks aren't just hunks of metal. They're the result of a carefully engineered decision to use the one material that balances strength, durability, affordability, and performance better than any other. Steel isn't just a good choice for rails. It's the best one we've got. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.